Chess has been an ecologist with the U.S. Geological Survey in Lafayette, Louisiana since 2003. During this time, Chess has become an expert in the surface elevation table or SET technique used to measure wetland elevation change, working with and modifying both original and rod sets. Chess also has an interest also has interest and expertise in below ground processes and wetlands, specifically marsh mangrove ecotones. In 2018, Chess joined the, Louis the University of Louisiana at Lafayette as a PhD student investigating elevation dynamics of black mangrove at its northern limits. And today Chess will be sharing with us the role of elevation in the northward advance of the black mangrove at the GTM Research Reserve. Thank you, uh, Abby, for that um, for that uh, introduction. So, um, uh, I just want to introduce my co-authors real quick: Samantha Chapman and Adam Langley from uh, Villanova, and Dr. Mark Kester from the Emeritus at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And I am talking about the role of elevation uh, in the northward advance of black mangrove at GTM Near. So we're all here probably because of this, uh, you know, climate change is the driver behind most of our research. And just real quick, you know, climate change, what's going to happen is an increase uh, frequency of and severity of storms. We saw that this year, actually, and increase in sea levels. We've talked about that a little bit, uh, higher regional temperatures and fewer freezing temperatures. And this is gonna result in a dis potential disturbance to wetlands, loss of wetlands, increase in invasive species, as well as a shift in species composition in wetlands, kind of the theme of this morning's uh, series of talks. And that's what I'm gonna concentrate on today is the increasing sea level rise, uh, sea, sea levels and the fewer fr freezing temperatures that is causing that shift in species composition. Um, we've seen this graph before, thanks Nikki, and shout out to, to our friends at NOAA. Um, so this is Mayport, Florida, which is in Jacksonville, just, just to, the north of, to the north of GTM, north of St. Augustine. And basically what you have, what this is showing is a 2.72 millimeter per year um, increase in sea levels. Now this equates to about one foot over a period of 100 years. Now this is relative sea level, so it depends on where you are. Like from where I'm from in South Louisiana, um, you have an increase, a sea level increase of uh, almost a meter over 100 years. So this is relative sea level. So this is really going to um, affect the dynamics of of how the marshes work. Uh, temperature. So this is uh, EPA's global surface temperature change. And starting in 2000, um, there are basically four different scenarios, uh, a high emission scenario and a low emission scenario. The low emission scenario is if we completely stop producing CO2, um, we are going to have at least one degree of Celsius increase in our, in our global sur uh, surface temperatures. And if, the, if we do nothing, you know, it, the temperatures are essentially going to increase uh, four degrees C, which is uh, unimaginable. And um, so what does this mean for GTM? Well, uh, this is a study conducted by Kavanaugh et al. in 2019. And these are, these are graphs from Daytona Beach, just south of St. Augustine. A is showing the annual temperature minimum. B is showing the annual freeze degree days. And if you notice, around or after 2050, uh, 30 years from now, you are essentially in D Daytona and, and probably in St. Augustine as well, you are essentially going to have a situation where you have no days below zero, and you're going to have no zero days with freezing temperatures. So this is a big deal for the mangroves that we've been, we've heard so much uh, this morning about. And this is a graphic from Osland et al. 2013, and uh, warmer winter temperatures are going to lead to mangrove range expansion and potential salt marsh replacement. So these guys, so the salt marsh, as you've seen, is the, the Spartana and Betis, uh, you know, these low uh, marsh grasses and succulents, and the 
black mangrove is this tree to bush to tree, and it's really going to outcompete these guys for uh, light. And as the as you have fewer freeze days, you're going to have expansion of mangroves into Georgia northwards. Keep is going to keep expanding, keep expanding. And um, this is actually for the low climate, low scenario, uh, low uh, emission scenario. The high emission scenario actually shows mangroves could be all the way up into North Carolina, which just blows my mind. So again, the sites and um, we're all friends here. So I'm gonna go a little bit more informal than, than Sam and Gabby. Uh, so the sites, you've seen these sites before, they are what we call the, the northern site, Big Mama, the middle site, Gabby's Creek, and the southernmost site, uh, North Matanzas. And these sites are again separated in, in terms of invasion, the least invaded, intermediate invaded, and the most invaded. So what I did at each of these sites is to install a benchmark. And these benchmarks are essentially stainless steel rods driven down to refusal. And then I install this receiver on top of those benchmarks and or on top of those rods. And so that receiver is stuck there. It's not moving. Uh, that elevation isn't going to change or it shouldn't unless somebody messes with it, but it's not going to change. And then I take this receiver and put it on top of that benchmark and attach the antennas. And these are the antennas uh, that you see here. And these antennas collect satellite, continuously collect satellite data. And um, it's basically telling this area where, where it is in space in X, Y, and Z. So X and Y, where it is uh, on the globe and Z, how high it is. So I'm constantly collect, collecting the elevation. And then after I get that elevation, I come to each site and then I use an optical level and a, a barcoded steadier rod to get elevations among the among the, these these three sites among these three marshes. Um, I've essentially taken a lot of elevations uh, for part of my study. I've taken elevations looking at individual mangroves and pairing them with marsh plots. I've also done some quick vegetation measurements which I'm not really going to cover here but um, the this is this is kind of showing Harris here who you just heard from taking a a, an elevation measurement here uh, in a marsh plot at Gabby's Creek. And there is the famous Big Mama right there. We're taking elevation at Big Mama. So I've taken a lot of these elevations. And now within uh, the wet feet sites, the warming chamber sites, this is at, this is at North Matanzas. I've taken a corner, essentially taken a corner of these, these plots and I've taken elevation measurements within a corner. Now I've visited these plots three different times, uh, May of 2019, January of 2020, and August of 2020. Any guesses why we haven't had any since then? But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So I've re revisit each of these spots. So each of these spots are, are a fixed point and we try to revisit that same point and get that elevation at each, each of these spots over three times. So without further ado, here are some of the results. Now these are benchmark elevations. Now these benchmarks are what I use to, to get, I, I, all the elevations that I've taken on the marsh are relative to these benchmarks. So I know I've got a lot of data as you can see here on these benchmarks. And this is the elevation, the actual North American vertical data, datum uh, 1988 elevations of the actual benchmarks. And this, uh, this also shows the amount of time that I've had those, had those antennas on these benchmarks as much as 45 hours at North Matanzas. Uh, any guesses as to which, uh, which site is the most difficult to get to? But so I've got really good elevation data. And now I'm gonna go into the marsh and take my elevations. And this is the elevations, all, every elevation that I've taken in these three marshes is summed up right here. And a couple of things I wanna point out, uh, NAVD 88 elevation is on this axis, that's measured in meters. And then from north to south, we have Big Mama, Gabby's Creek and North Matanzas uh, with Big Mama being the lowest in elevation and Gabby's Creek being the highest in elevation. 
Now, a couple of things that I want to point out that are really interesting to, to me, and um, uh, I didn't really notice until I, I set up this graph for this talk, but if you look at the way the outliers fall in these, in these um, elevations at Big Mama, all of the outliers are, are higher. At Gabby's Creek, all of the outliers are lower. So, uh, and, and also at NMAT, you see our data range is short, it's small, it's a small data range. Um, I want you to remember this just for a few minutes because I'm gonna revisit this. But without further ado, here is the NSF elevate, the uh, plot elevation change in the warming chambers. This is the warming chambers themselves, which you heard Sam talk about um, you heard Gabby talk about them as well. And so again, you have the NAVD 88 elevation on the, on the Y axis, north to south, Big Mama, Gabby's Creek and NMAT on the X axis are three different time periods. Yellow is May of 2019, green is the uh, January of 2020 and orange is August of 2020. And what we've seen here, well, first off, we haven't yet found an effect of, of vegetation on elevation. And we also have not yet found an effect of, um, of warming on elevation. So uh, what we see here is zero elevation change at Big Mama from 2019 to the last time I took the elevations. No, no change, statistically no change. At uh, North Matanzas, we have a statistical change from May of 2019 to to August of 2020 of five millimeters. And we are able to, de to detect elevation change within these plots uh, for each sampling period at North Matanzas. Now, what this tells me is that my method is really good at detecting elevation change, even small methods of elevation change. So this, is, this really has me excited. So next, this is my marsh mangrove experiment. And we have um, NAVD 88 elevations again on this axis, north to south on, on the X axis here, Big Mama, Gabby's Creek and North Matanzas. The blue is our mangrove elevations and the orange is, the, our, is my marsh elevation. So what I want you to notice here is that at each of the sites, there is no statistical difference in elevation for mangroves. Mangroves are all in that same elevation. Uh, the marshes at Big Mama and North Matanzas are statistically similar. And at the marsh at Gabby's Creek is significantly higher than the other two marshes. So remember those, uh, those outlier trends. So what I'm thinking is that at Big Mama, the mangroves are occupying that higher space and really doing well and, and growing well at the higher space at Big Mama at um it's the most Three minutes. thank you it's the uh, so it's the least invaded at the one that's the, the intermediate site the marsh is higher so those those outliers could be the mangroves at the lower lower edge and then at north matanzas the most invaded the element there's no elevation difference so those guys are wherever they land they grow um, and Gabby's Creek, the mangroves just might have more problems getting up into the, up into the uh, actual marsh itself. So why is this important? It's important because of the ecosystem services that, that these mangroves could potentially provide. Uh, this is a graph from Simpson et al. 2019, uh, where she showed that a 68% increase in carbon stock between 2015 and 2018. And, um, so essentially, when you have mangroves come in, you have the potential for more carbon storage. A little ironic, if you ask me, I guess. Uh, so there, there, you could have more storage of carbon. So it might actually not necessarily offset global climate change, but it's a way that it could offset climate change. The warmer it gets, the more carbon that's going to be stored. This is just one ecosystem, services, uh, ecosystem service of these mangroves. So from here, what I'm going to do is remeasure the uh, warming chamber plots, the NSF plots again uh, next month. 
And then again, in August of 2021, I'm going to keep reading those as long as I can. From our marsh mangrove study, uh, I would like to age a sub subset of mangroves, get some soil parameters from the marshes and mangroves that I've measured, and shoot more individuals uh, at Big Mama, North Batanzas, and, and at uh, Gabby's Creek. And finally, uh, there's a fertilization um, experiment ongoing. I'm going to install a benchmark there in a couple of weeks and measure tree elevations and get uh, root root in growth at this at this spot. So, I want to thank uh, everybody at the at GTM. I second Sam's uh, uh, thought on really finding a research home. It's a great place to do research. I specifically want to thank uh, Nikki, Pam, and Gabby. I'd like to thank my graduate committee. I'd also like to thank the, uh, the, the my my colleagues at the Wetlands Aquatic Research Center for uh, help with uh, uh, materials and and also finally the rest of the Wet Feet crew. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Chess. Don't see any questions in the chat box. Oh, we just got. So you mentioned a difference in carbon sequestration between mangrove and salt marsh. Um, what other changes in ecosystem services did you observe or do you predict with the northern migration of uh, mangroves? Uh, thanks, Rachel. Good question. So, um, so with the northern expansion of, well, another ecosystem service that mangroves could have is potentially to, to knock down that, that wave attenuation you know, fewer, fewer waves, maybe some less erosion, some things like that. Um, I haven't looked into that and it's not something I'm looking into, but uh, I've seen some, you know, some information on it. Uh, you know, Dr. Larray Simpson is really, really good, which is, she's south of you guys in, uh, in Fort Pierce right now. She's really good at kind of the ecosystem services for, uh, for these mangroves. Thank you. Welcome. We have time for or maybe another question. Do you think at Gabby's Creek, the mangroves are limited by dispersal or survival? Or are they maybe not limited by survival so much at the North Matanzas site? Okay, this is just a hypothesis. So I think it's limited by dispersal. Uh, that marsh is higher, so it takes more of a tide, maybe more of a storm for those uh, mangrove propagules to get up onto that marsh. Whereas at Big Mama, um, in order for that mangrove to seedling or propagule to survive and grow, it needs to hit that right elevation. And at North Matanzas, that elevation is already right. You saw by that little, you know, how short the, the data range was there, the elevation range was there, that's perfect elevation. So wherever a propagule lands, it's gonna grow, potentially. Great, thank you. Yep, thank you. 